Is it not better to have lived in peace than to have songs sung after you're dead? As a non-book reader, Catfish, how long do you expect King Viserys to live after episode five? And how would you like to be compared to a greasy goose? All those questions and more will be answered on this week's podcast, The Joffrey Podcast. Podcast. Professional as always. I've been very busy. Many important matters require King's attention. I'm King now. King, 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 King now. I am King. I am King. I am Kiss it. I am Kiss it again. I am your fingers or your King doesn't fingers. Discuss your battle plan. I am Super Your fingers or your tongue. I am the King. I'm telling Mother. My name's Bubba, and with me, as always, is Catfish. Catfish, we're going to be breaking down season one, episode five. Oh, my God. Light the way of House of the Dragon. If you haven't seen it, guys, bounce. This is a full spoiler podcast. Catfish, what is your rating out of 10 for episode five? We light the way. Now, Bubba, I feel like every week you have to remind people, like tirelessly, I'm like, I'm over it already. Stop reminding people that we like to make jokes. That's true. So before I do my doubles, I want to remind everybody <laughs> <laughs> that these are jokes. Okay. okay. All right, Bubba, people. I, yeah. had a t- I had a tough one. I had okay. a tough one because I was going to go with triple C's. Wait, triple C's? Yeah, Chatty Kristen Coles. No, he told too much. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's and then I was, I was going to go with triple S. Triple S? Yeah, shit stir strong. That shit stir Lair's strong. Yeah, but in the fun. end, I had to give this episode eight out of 10, what I like to call double D's. Double D's? Yeah. Divorce, Damon style. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't think Rhea Royce signed the prenup. This is a bad, bad news. Eight out of 10. Very high, Catfish. Why so high? Well, I, you know, I like that we got out on the road. Although, again, yeah. our trip to the Vale was brief. And just like Damon's wife's life, we had Otto breaking it down for Alicent in which which in a scene which not only was strong, but basically sent her on a new trajectory. Uh, That was a life changing scene for her. Although I'd like to though, I thought everything Otto said was right. I'd like to remind my mind, Otto, he's the one. Who who pimped her out to the king? So that was his problem. After what I did, you've mm-hmm. done everything wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. How could you put yourself in this compromising position after I put you in it? <laughs> Kristen folded oh, like a cheap suit. Whoa! I mean, and Bubba, I gotta yeah. say, I don't like to admit things. I also think that you know, uh, lies aren't good. No. But I want to make this clear. Okay. If I tell you that I did something that as a result, you are then allowed to geld and torture me, I'm not telling the truth. I just want to make that what? clear right now. I would want to make it clear. But you if hate you lies. Me, tell me the truth. Yeah. And if you tell me A, you're going to get gelded and tortured. I will tell you B through Z and not one stop on A, even if it was quadruple A. Quadruple A. Yeah, I don't know. That's four A to go to A A A A. Four times as bad as A. I'm not yep. doing it. I I I like what was going on in here. It's funny. I gave it a high rating, but I'm going to mention a couple things. One, it's just a quirk for me. Okay. I don't like when things happen when they're misunderstandings, and I felt like they really uh, had to juice the dialogue to get Kristen to admit to something that Allison wasn't accusing him of. I mean, this, it used, this, this used to happen all the time to House Tripper, uh, our buddy Jack. <laughs> yeah, I, I I will let the audience know. I even hate this goes back to even classic literature. I hate okay. the ending of Romeo and Juliet because there was a miscommunication there. I find that to be cheap. Anyway, uh-huh. I did not like that. I also got to tell you, Bubba. Yeah, I, this is straight up. You know, we do this podcast right after the show. I have no idea how the brawl started. Uh, I like the king thought maybe something was going on with with Damon and Renera, and then maybe. all of a sudden, I guess I don't it, 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 I don't really know who started it. I know who finished it. <laughs> it was the Triple C, Kristen, Chatty, Chatty Kristen Cole, Chatty Kristen Cole. Um, 
But in general, I liked it. And also, uh, you know, I did, you know, I do like to sneak a preview of next week. And I'm going to be sad to uh, be saying goodbye to young Alicent and young Rhaenyra, who I thought were amazing in this show. Yeah, it seems like this is the last episode for them. So we'll salute their acting at the end. Let me ask you something, Catfish, before I give okay. you my rating. Yeah, I can't. I want to you, hear yours. You don't, you, you're you like, what happened? How did this brawl start and all these things? Is it a detriment that you don't know how it started? Or is it stuff went down and you actually kind of like that? You know, people are drinking, people are, uh, you know, getting up in each other's business. And the next thing you know, the night of kisses, uh, you know, peaced out. I don't mind it normally, mm-hmm. but it felt like there was sort of a misdirect because at first it looked like everyone was looking outside, like somebody rushed in. Right. So I don't know if they're holding that as a secret or that's going to be some big reveal, but it would have been a little bit clearer to me. I love the brawl. I always love uh, a good brawl, <laughs> but you know, just to watch, like to watch, yeah, just to watch. Yeah, but it's always good to know who started it and who you're rooting for when you watch a brawl, right? You want to know who to root for. Okay. So that's all I have to say about that. Now, but, so Bubba, for, forget me, since I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. What was your rating of tonight's episode? Well, Catfish, this is driving me crazy. Mm-hmm. We do not talk about these ratings at all before we start recording. We don't we talk do about how you feel about it. We don't talk about how I feel about it. And seemingly every week, we match numbers. And so Holy I'm thinking, cow. should we podcast about Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power? Because we disagree about that. But Very I'm well. right there with you. I'm giving this eight double double U's out of 10. Whoa, double double U's? Well, our buddy Kristen Cole is a white cloak. And he felt like Renera was asking him to be a white cloak whore. <laughs> and ouch, a lo- eight out of 10. I love so many of these scenes. I mm-hmm. love the political intrigue. I'm going to answer a question later from a great double L. Double L. Double S. Double S. Loyal listener, Susan Stacy. I'm going to oh, answer okay. her question, and which maybe goes to why I don't go full 10 out of 10, because there okay. was so much in this episode I liked. But really good, really great. A tight, you know, like... Things are getting tenser and tenser and tenser, and I love it. Mm. Mm. There's nothing like getting ready for a big wedding celebration, mm-hmm. uh, a week-long celebration, and then just having a shotgun-style wedding uh, amidst yeah. the blood and the rats. <laughs> it reminds me of my marriage. <laughs> hey, Catfish, because this is episode five, we're at the halfway point of season Holy one. Cow. Let's get to it. What do you think of House of the Dragon so far at the halfway point? What do you think? You know, you gave a good rating to this episode. You've seen five. What's your overall thoughts of the episode of the season and the series at the halfway point? I like it, but I'm still having issues with it. And now I know we're going to have a a big jump again Mm -hmm. next week. Big jump. I talked about how, hey, this is great. We got outside. We went on two trips, but they were very short trips. And they involve, I mean, we did not involve a new character, but just to kind of bump them off. So <laughs> it, it feels like we're getting introduced to new characters. I mean, we got uh, Damon's wife and we got uh, Joffrey and they, and, and, and they gone already. So we're kind of back to the original group of people. You kind of uh, don't haven't read these books. You don't know anything. I have not I have at read all. Mm-hmm. These books. So later on in this podcast, we're going to go to Catfish some, for some predictions of where he thinks this podcast will go. But Ooh. listeners, if you haven't read Fire and Blood or The Rogue Prince or The Princess and the Queen, we want you to reach out to us on social media at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. If you're watching this on YouTube, go down in the comments, write what you think of the series so far. If you have read those novels, if you do think you know where it's going based on having read those novels, still reply, but don't give any spoilers in tweet or in a comment down in YouTube for our people who haven't listened ahead. I've I've got some really good predictions, Bubba. Oh, I can't wait. And I mentioned that I'm going to answer later in this podcast a wonderful question from Susan Stacy, who is uh, just gave a great uh, a question to me and to you listeners as well. We're going to touch on it when we do our small council debates, and we want you to jump in Love as it. well. 
Now, listeners, we come to you all the time with questions, and we asked two unique questions this week on social media. Oh, Catfish, great. What did we ask on Twitter? All right. Well, uh, fortuitously, as we were going through the podcast last week, uh, I came up with the two uh, what I like to think are some of probably the cleverest things I've ever thought of in all my years on this uh, planet, which just shows you how low sad bar. my life low has bar. been. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a low bar. <laughs> and I passed it. OK, so we asked uh, I came up with two kind of acronyms for yep. uh, where where Renee could have been going with her love life. Mm -hmm. uh, we asked, uh, who does Rhaenyra prefer? Uh, DTI. DTI. That, yeah, down to incest uh, with oh. Damon. Uncle or yeah. KGWB. KGWB. Yeah, Kingsguard with benefits. Oh. And this one split exactly two-thirds, one-third DTI, two-thirds, 66.7%, and KGWB, 33.3%. Wow. Well, Catfish, let me come to you since you came up with these acronyms and you you uh, can only go on the show here. Based on last week and this week, which one does Rhaenyra prefer? Uncle DTI or Kristen KGWB? It's got to be DTI. Whoa. The, Kristen is, uh, I, I don't want to say he's exactly a himbo. Uh, but oh. I mean, he's a good looking dude, but he doesn't Very, have yeah. that sparkle that she has with Damon. I mean, even tonight when they were having that fight, it had some frisson in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we asked our YouTube audience, we said, okay, ignore what Renera likes. Which one should she choose? What suitor should Renera choose? And mm. YouTube catfish went the other way. The King's Guard boy toy, Kristen Cole won that with 58% of the vote. Ooh. While DTI, down to incest Uncle Damon, only got 42% of the vote. So the audience almost evenly split, but uh, you know, a healthy margin for Kristen Cole. So, well, these are two different know, questions. And actually, they are two Bubba, different questions. I think I agree with both of these questions. Mm -hmm. I do agree that she should choose the King's King's Guard boy toy. Right. Because Damon is going to try to steal her thunder and she's got enough power to go through life and just have her boy toy on a hook. Although, although he did show that uh, he's not as close lipped and trustworthy as he should be. So, no, getting involved with him seems to be a mistake so far. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, this is interesting. The mm -hmm. audience thinks she likes Damon better, but she should choose Kristen. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. Audience, she should choose the one she likes least. You know, that's kind of a weird, weird process we went through there. So, hey, we love reaching out to you guys. This is a very interactive podcast. If you're new to the Joffrey podcast, please subscribe. Please tell us all your thoughts. We want you to be on this discussion with us on House of the Dragon. And hey, if you're listening on Spotify, we could always use a little help. Now, if you're on the Spotify app, on the show page, you know there's those three horizontal lines right by the podcast, the Joffrey podcast. You can uh, click on that and then select Rate Show. And if you could leave us five stars, you will officially, officially be Renera's new husband. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, congratulations. We need, we need it. So please, if you're on Spotify, or please consort. go to yeah, all right. <laughs> I think I'd rather be her consort. Being okay. her husband is uh, too much of a target. And if you like hearing two knuckleheads like us talk about House of the Dragon, know that later this week, oh my goodness, how can we keep podcasting so much? The Parsic Passion podcast is coming back as Andor, a new Star Wars series on Disney Plus debuts. Go search the Parsec Passion podcast on all your favorite podcast apps, and you'll hear us talking about Andor well, as he tries to fight the evil empire. But I don't mind that, Bubba. I mean, clearly that's a Star Wars show, so it's only going to be, what, 25, 30 minutes? Right. It is only the episodes are going to be about 30 minutes each. Great. It's one, just one episode on one, a week is fine, uh, and then well, 30 minutes, uh, what? One episode a week is fine, but this week... We're doing three. This oh, week we're launching with three. So we're going to be talking about 90 minutes worth of content on our new Andor uh, Parsec Passion coverage.
don't they know we're not making any money from this? Why are they making us work so hard, Bubba? Uh, Star Wars, they want our money. HBO wants our money. Way to go, HBO Max. <laughs> yeah, but we're not getting any money ourselves. No, we aren't. All right, but hey, you know yes. what we are getting is we are getting some wonderful Double L loyal listener feedback to our match game questions. I hey, love Catfish, it. Are you ready for match game question number one? I am indeed ready for it. Sir Joffrey Lawnmouth was known as the Knight of Kisses. Of course, that was before the feast. After the feast, he'll be known as blank. Boom, ba, boom, 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 boom. So, Jeff, Sir Joffrey Lawnmouth was mm -hmm. known as the Knight of Kisses. After the feast, he'll be known as Juicy Joffrey. <laughs> and the rats were enjoying his juice during this wedding ceremony. Oh, I mean, that to is a, a bad pulp. way to go. I thought to ourselves, we've got a Joffrey on this show. Thank, oh no. <laughs> Ouch. All right, Bubba, I'll read it yeah. for you now. Sure. Sir Joffrey Lawnmouth was known as the Knight of Kisses. After the feast, he will be known as the Knight of Fistas. <laughs> Because he got several fistas right into his face. <laughs> Not the night of kisses, but the night of fistas. <laughs> that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Bubba, yeah. I got to say, I like our answers. But yeah. unlike other answers, I'm not so confident we matched with any of our listeners. Oh, we've got several. Well, we've got four. We record this right after the show. We already have four answers. Are you ready, Catfish, for some of these horrific answers that our <laughs> I listeners... Love, I love our listeners. Sir Joffrey Lawnmouth was known as the Knight of Kisses. After the feast, he'll be known as... Dead. It doesn't have like quite that. the same ring to it, does it? <laughs> I mean, it gets right to the point, and that is, as always, Pat Spinagle at Patman23. Great job, The Pat great, man. a great man. All right, All right let's, Bubba, here we go. I'm going to read it again. You ready? After okay. the feast, he'll be known as... The face of a thousand fists. Oh, that's pretty close. <laughs> that's pretty close to that's you. That's pretty close. That's Heck pretty yeah, close to get you. Get that a little ling. That's pretty good. I that love from? it. That's Dooley's left leg. It's another great loyal listener. Oh, my goodness. All right, Bubba. Now really? we've got a more. I'll read them for you. Sir Joffrey Lawnmouth was known as the Knight of Kisses. After the feast, he will be known as a faceless man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I and love the yes. callback. Who is that, oh, Bubba? That's uh, at Mando Tori, Tori Hunter on Twitter. Oh, my These God. These guys so kill good. it. These are three for three and brilliant answers. All right. So good. All right, Bubba. Let's see if we can do it again. Here Sir Joffrey Lawnmouth was known as the Knight of Kisses. After the feast, he will be known as... The Knight of Too Many Holes. <laughs> How terrible. Uh, it might have only been one too many, but it was a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, there were so many holes, it became one huge gaping maw. That was uh, awesome. Who was that, Bubba? That's at Likely Seth. I love it. On Twitter. Guys, we read these we read these answers all through the week. So if you have oh, uh, an answer to what Sir Joffrey Lawnmouth will be known as after the feast, Please let us know. Oh, my goodness. I These can't believe you so matched. Good. I can't believe so you matched with somebody. It's so good. I was proud because, you know, a lot of our listeners use the doubles, and I never get they to. Do. I never uh, do I either. forget to, but I got, I got it tonight, so I thought I was hoping I'd get a match, but I did not. We love talking about, when we review the episode, the mm -hmm. strongest scenes. Sometimes mm -hmm. we talk about the weakest scenes. But we love to talk about the strongest scenes in these episodes. Mm. We're both 8 out of 10. We're both really high. Catfish. What did you feel was the strongest scene in this episode? Mm, the strongest scene in this episode. I think it's going to be half the one I mentioned already. It was a short scene, but the scene between Otto Hightower and Alicent. Oh, so Because good. I thought he was, for two reasons. One, I thought he was completely right about how it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. And he really shook Alicent up. Uh, while also, and I appreciated this, not taking any responsibility for a situation at all. <laughs> just like Dad always did. <laughs> yeah, just like Dad. I don't know how you got whipped with that belt, son. 
Right. Now, one of the great things I love that Otto said to his mm -hmm. daughter, Allison, is, you know, she's like, well, Rhaenyra denied it. And he's like, you wanted to believe her. You wanted to believe that mm -hmm. she, you know, didn't fool around. And that was a great line. And I think it really stung Allison going forward. So it's not just a great scene in the moment, but when a great scene has, you know, kind of repercussions from it, mm -hmm. I think you're right. I think that scene was incredibly strong. He, it wasn't what I would call the strongest scene for me, but mm -hmm. that was what the kind of the beginning of this episode needed. You needed well, that emotion and power. Bubba, it's funny because, you know, at the beginning of the episode, I mentioned how I hate where there's kind of this miscommunication and that sets everything right. into, into play. But it's funny because I was a little bothered by it the previous week because... Because... Allison was accusing Rhaenyra of being with Damon. Mm -hmm. So Rhaenyra could have been honest by just saying, instead of saying, in general, I didn't lose my maiden head, just I did not lose my maiden head to Damon. That's honest, right? but also obstructionist. And that <laughs> I appreciate. <laughs> well, all right, Bubba, so what was your favorite scene? Well, hold on. I want to dive just okay. a bit deeper into this because I think it is such a good scene. And it does call back to last week so much. One thing I thought about, about why, why is this sting in Allison so much when she finds out about the tea from the guy spilling the tea, Laris Strong. But to me, remember last week, Rhaenyra was pledging on her dead mother, right? She's like, mm -hmm. on my dead mother, it didn't happen. Allison has a dead mother. She knows kind of how big it is to pledge something on a, on mm -hmm. a dead mother. And then to find out about the tea from Laris, who's spilling the tea, I thought, you know, ooh, that just that just paid off so well. And so I I kind of like that Allison is now bucking up. It's hard to hear your best friend lied to you when you were kind of, you know, she was really trying to help her best friend out and her best friend lied to her. She was, yeah. You know, are they, you know, they're not really best friends anymore, right? Like it is, it's over. Uh, I think she might try to now it seems like Allison is going to be playing the game a little bit. Oh yeah. So, so. I, I think she's going to go into full on keep your enemies close mode. Although she did try to kind of upstage the King. Good for her. Hell yeah. Well, I, what I liked about it was, you know, I have the subtitles on. And so after she stops, it's almost like, well, the King's not going to like that. And I thought, Hey, the King is the one that stopped. He could have just kept going. Right. Everybody focus back on the king here. Yeah, just keep talking. I'm sorry, I'm talking. Honey, let, the, let the queen saunter however she wants. No honey, one's I'm in the middle of my PowerPoint presentation. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> now from, I have to do the slides right. all over exactly. again. All right, so here... I had music with this. It was going to crescendo <laughs> at the right point. The little animation. Okay, guys, pretend you didn't see the animation. Here, let's go back. Let's go back. For me, I wrote mm -hmm. this down as my strongest scene right after it happened. And maybe there were some stronger scenes later, but I'm going to go with my first choice because not that I didn't love that Otto Allison scene, mm -hmm. but to me, the scene of Kristen Cole coming to Rhaenyra on the boat and mm. his utter inability to read the room to read the read the boat to yeah. read Rhaenyra and maybe one reason why I loved it so much is dare I think it every person who's been in any sort of relationship has been in this stage where you know it's always do you like them more do they like you more you know like there's always this kind of jockeying and he did not read it at all and in a lot of ways Rhaenyra who is played by this very young actress comes across so much more mature than he is. It is heartbreaking to she hear does. somebody, you know, say, you know, there's a way we can sail away and have fun. And, you know, I, the fact that he couldn't see it and he couldn't stop sooner. And when he did, you know, kind of coldly say, so you want me to be your whore? You know, mm -hmm. this is, you know, he broke his vow. He understands how important that is. Throughout the episode, he keeps realizing, okay, this is a oh, big yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. But, when she doesn't, you know, he thinks it's a big step, like, hey, let's get married, let's go have fun. And to be honest, she probably would have more fun, once again, not being queen. But 
for him not to read it, it was so brutal. I just loved it. I loved it's it. It's funny you say that because we had this almost the same discussion last yep. week. We're like, we did. why does she want it? So it was good to actually see him challenge her on it. Although, to me, why it wasn't my favorite scene was it still felt a little rote to me. A little bit. A her little explanations bit. of like what she wants, like this would have been a perfect point for her to say, this is what I want. That I want my life to mean something. She sort of does it. I mean, when she, when she says, uh, you want me to be a nobody? <laughs> 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 Go off with you and we'll be bums? I don't think so. You know what I ride? Dragons and you shut up. <laughs> Well, okay, say you're Kristen Cole. Would you have taken the deal? Would you be the, you know, the KGWB on the side for the rest of her life, seemingly? I mean, it's a great deal. It's a great deal. You close to the power there. Yep. You know, I didn't realize that he was so... First of all, I mean, he does try to double S. Double S? Yeah, slut shame, Renera. Oh. With Allison, he's like, okay, so she started it, but... Oh, when know. he's confessing. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's trying to... He does... Admittedly, that's true, but yeah, at that point, you don't need to do that, Kristen. I agree. Yeah. Just shut up and take your gelding like a soon-to-be <laughs> not-man. <laughs> um, okay, I want to touch on a couple other scenes. Even okay. These are our strongest. What did you think of Corliss's kind of negotiation? Like, hey... It's my son, their kids will have my last name. He's like, hey, you know, that's kind of a big ask. Hey, King, this Targaryen dynasty will quickly become a Valerian dynasty. I, I thought that was nice negotiating. I thought it was realistic that he kind of, you know, once the king said it'll be like this, you know, once they sit on the throne, they'll be Targaryens. Very realistic that he's like, okay, that's that is probably the most I can get. So I, I did like Corliss's negotiation, but he doesn't really listen to his wife too much when she's telling him things like, Hey dude, our, you know, our son, which, you know, you know, which way our son swings and you are putting him in a lot of danger. And so, uh, he doesn't do that, but I thought his negotiation was pretty strong. what do you think? Well, also she also says, and maybe he knows that she doesn't mean this, that she's kind of forgotten about that. That's not important to her anymore, but it does feel like, the way uh, Viserys is greeted mm -hmm. very yeah. disrespectfully and the yes. way they respond to his proposal feels like they had an idea already that oh, this right. was Oh, right, yeah, the fact that they don't, that they, you know, that they already have a counter offer or a right, amend, right. an amendment to the offer, really. Well, that sounds interesting. How about, though, the Targaryen name no longer exists? Is that cool with you? <laughs> uh, so... I thought it was too bold, and I thought the king would would say no. Also, there doesn't seem a very satisfactory compromise. Right, what does yeah. it matter if he's Viserion until they become king, and then then they're Targaryen? I don't. Again, by that point, we're talking like thirty, forty years down the line. It feels like. That will be settled then and not now. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's a, actually, that's pretty smart, Catfish. I completely, completely agree. Any other scenes that you thought were especially strong or especially tough? You know, what? any scene that kept it from a 10 out of 10 for you? Besides the brawl and you're like, what? how did this start? What's going on? I just, and I think we'll continue to talk about it later have a hard time with the it's okay to give us a hint that the mm -hmm. king is going downhill but my god man how is he still alive <laughs> <laughs> this i love it you know it's like he's gonna keep fighting <laughs> with, yeah sure until give the him leeches the milk of the vicodin each night <laughs> He's going to be he's going to be the Black Knight in Monty Python with the leeches taking away his. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, 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 listeners, what was your favorite scene? What was your strongest moment? Do you agree how Catfish and I saw this? Let us know at Double PHQ, Facebook.com/slash Double PHQ, 
YouTube. Give us those comments. Hit that like. We want to hear from you. And we're going to hear from you right now as we go to our match game. Duh. You ready, Catfish? All right, Bubba. I really want to match with someone this time. Okay, here we go. So, Jason Lannister is so terrible. How terrible is he? He's so terrible, his wedding gift for Rhaenyra was blank. Okay. His wedding gift for Rhaenyra was... A three-way with his twin brother. Man, that wasn't on the gift registry. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. All right, Bubba, here we go. Okay, now it's go. your turn. Jason Lannister is so terrible. How terrible is he? His wedding gift for Rhaenyra was... I roll worthy. Because she rolled her eyes so strongly at his presence. It was a wonderful gift. A gift of eye rolling. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Bubba, we all know yeah. you are the master of eye work. Thank you. We all are. Right. And Let's that's see why, that's why I put this. That's why I put this YouTube video so small on the screen. Because my eye work would disturb too many people. All right, Bubba, I am going to read this question and you will answer from our listeners. Jason what? Lannister is so terrible. How terrible is he? His wedding gift for Rhaenyra was... A signed portrait where he's theatrically winking. <laughs> you know, Bubba, I think yeah. you should give a half jingle for that. For you, once again, I think you okay. match. All right, and that, that was, who's that? That was from Dooley's Left Legs. At Holy Dooley's cow. Left Legs on Twitter. All right, I'm still hopeful. I'm still hopeful. All right, here we go. Jason Lannister is so terrible. How terrible is he? His wedding gift for Rhaenyra was... Goose. <laughs> now, that's somebody paying attention. It's <laughs> ah, at Ben ah. Dooley on Twitter. We know her preference. Oh, so. <laughs> that is good. That is good. Greasy goose. All right, here Love we it. go. All yeah. right, Bubba. Yeah. Jason Lannister, so terrible. His wedding gift for Inera was... An all-expense-paid trip for two to Flea Bottom. Oh! <laughs> now, there you go. That is like a that is a match game total present prize you would win. Very good. At Holy Nicholas Fortuna. Cow. That is Nick so Fortuna good. Nick Fortuna on Twitter. Very good. Wonderful presents all week long. I love it. All right, Bubba, hit me with. Are there any more? No, that's it. No, that's it. This we, okay, you know, we great. tweet these out right before right we away. start recording. So, listeners, throughout the week, please answer these. We'll read them on next week's podcast. So, Catfish, it's time for our character study on this. And we haven't really talked about somebody who has been such a big part of this show, and that's Uncle Damon, Brother Damon, Prince Damon. At the beginning of this episode, we met his wife, finally. The wife he's been calling the bronze B-word. And, you know, call me crazy. She is an attractive woman. This woman that he's been mm -hmm. terrible and like, oh, he doesn't want to do any husbandly duties. And we find out today that he apparently hasn't even consummated his marriage. She, She's lovely. What's going on here, Catfish? Well, Bubba, all I can say is this, is maybe he felt threatened. She is a very adventurous oh, wow. rider. Wow. <laughs> right? I mean, I was like, yeah. man, and she's like, rides angry. Mm -hmm. And she is uh, proficient uh, in hunting. So maybe he felt emasculated. Right. We know how seemingly after that brothel trip, when Rhaenyra kind of started leaving the amorous ways, he kind of backed out and, and was like, oh, let me leave. I wonder if Raya Royce, you know, because she is kind of somebody who wants to take the lead, if that's why. He couldn't finish. Oh, and I love her, oh. her final line. I knew you couldn't finish, Craven. If you're gonna now, go, if you're gonna go, that's a good way to go, Raya Royce. Now I found this interesting, Bubba, because in the first yeah. episode, right, we, you know, Damon was the one you love to hate, but yeah. less love, but like love slash love to hate. Like he's right. he's roguish. Right. Now, if, however. We had actually seen him do the deed the way we saw Chris and Cole do his deed. Hmm, okay. I think there is no coming back from that. The fact that it happened you mean with off camera. No, 
if oh you mean seeing if him kill Damon, his wife. if you'd actually seen him kill his wife there would right. be no way to even later on go well Damon's kind of a bad boy but I still like him so I think they stopped showing that they did not show that the way they've shown a lot of really violent right. things a lot of violence because He's- there's just no coming back from that for Damon with many people and I wonder if there were people who even though they didn't see it are still at that point of, I can't, I can't, I can no longer be with Damon in, in right. any way. I can't enjoy his roguishness when his right. roguishness is like, I don't like this wedding, uh, this marriage. I'm just going to end it in the coldest way possible. Yeah, no, he's terrible. And for everybody who kind of loved his, you know, roguish, his, 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 his nature, that's terrible. Mm. And why would you want Rhaenyra to be with somebody like that? I mean, it's bad enough that he's a, her, her uncle, but now he's doing that. And then he is making googly eyes at the little girl who a couple episodes ago was going to marry the king, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, you know, he he's still, you know, he has that bad boy quality. Uh, if only she knew how badly things can end. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, Let's get to Damon being proposed. You know, Rhaenyra tells him, hey, why not just grab me and go? Steal me and take me to Dragonstone and make me your wife. Like, she's kind of saying, you know, do the, you know, uh, uh, get on with it, I guess is the last, do it or shut up, maybe is the best way she's saying it. <laughs> right, right. And he that doesn't, is good. right? No, no, he doesn't. Uh, well, we see her, we see him kind of make a move on her and I guess mm-hmm. we could assume maybe maybe at, by the time people are listening to this podcast either it will be cleared up by somebody or someone watched it in slow motion maybe Kristen Cole was going after Damon why yeah, he wonder. got involved with Joffrey who he had an earlier yep. interaction with uh, why he would want to kill Joffrey just for knowing that secret that he'll that Kristen Cole will blab to anybody apparently <laughs> Is is what's <laughs> confusing me about this? Yeah, why? Well, Kristen Cole also. I mean, I think you got to watch this slow down. I'm pretty sure he got a punch in on Lenore as well. Like he's like, he, he, but maybe when Lenore was trying to save his mm-hmm. his his boyfriend, lover, whatever, Joffrey, that's when Kristen Cole smacked him too. But yeah. I thought that. Oh, so maybe I missed this too. But I thought that he went in uh, when Rhaenyra called for his help. I didn't oh, think okay. that he was going after Joffrey. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, we do this right afterwards, so yeah. we don't have the uh, advantage of being able to slow things down in slow motion. But uh, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I thought about. Well, this is, our, this is our character talk. Mm-hmm. Do you want to say anything about one episode Joffrey? The namesake of our podcast is not this guy. This guy doesn't measure up. He he made a mess of he made a mess of the great hall of the throne room, but not due to his own. First of all, he was smart. He figured out who he was smart. But you don't tell the. I mean, I think that was. I think he was. It was like I'm not saying that he deserved what happened to him, but <laughs> it. Unless <laughs> listeners, you want me to, if you want me to know. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that. What Joffrey did was mm-hmm. he told Kristen Cole, hey, mm-hmm. I know your secret. Mm-hmm. You may know mine. Or I, I know your secret. You may know mine. You're going to keep your mouth shut so we can both live. Right? That was it. Or like, both, hey. both or protect the people that we right. love. I, I mean, exactly. he, he's basically he's basically out him, outing himself to Kristen. So yes. Kristen, again, shows my, the first few episodes – not seeing a lot from Kristen, so we just assume, oh, he's a good-looking guy. He's got his uh, shit together. In this episode, uh, he loses it in many, many ways. At least he three really separate occasions. He really he does. He basically puts his foot in his mouth before putting his hand into the <laughs> back of someone's head. Oh, my Lord. He really, really does. How do you explain that? Uh, Sir Kristen, come in for your weekly review. <laughs> sure thing, <laughs> uh, boss. Um, we were having the, you know, pre-wedding feast the other night, and you uh, really kind of uh, beat up somebody. 
Well, how does probably he probably a nobleman, right? How does he even get away? That's the question. Yeah. How is he not put into chains right away? And what caused this is kind of another thing. What caused from the brawl, what caused them to say, well, we better have this wedding now, even though everyone knows it's going to look weird because they've got seven days right. worth of planning. Yeah. Well, I don't, I kind of don't understand that. Hmm. Unless they were like, you know, we can't afford any more for this episode. This is it. We're just showing this feast. What if it's like, if these people get together again, it could, it could blow up again. So let's just have, let's just have them married now so that it doesn't blow up again. Okay, sure. Maybe? I guess, I guess that's what it is. I'm sorry. This wedding is too controversial and hot. <laughs> Well, hey, how about this? Let's. This mm -hmm. is we're talking characters. We've talked Joffrey, Kristen Cole, Raya Royce. Let's go deeper into Allison. You mentioned it. She is mm -hmm. playing the game, and I love it. I love her playing the game. I love her. How about this though? As good as I think she was in this episode, Allison. I mean, mm -hmm. did she take what? Did she? Does she at least realize? that Laris Strong, who's the new Hand of the King's son, you know, one of his two sons, does she know that this was a very manipulative thing, right? Like, hey, I'm I'm telling you this about the tea because I want, you know, he's prodding. He has the information. Is he trying to get close to her? Should she be fearful of this guy? Who, To me, that almost felt very little finger-esque. Oh, yeah. She's manipulated and doesn't realize she's being manipulated at that right. moment. But to her, this guy is nobody. So the more important thing is not whether she's being manipulated from this guy. She doesn't care, really. I wouldn't imagine she'd care why he's doing it. All that she cares about at this point is, oh, man, is this true? Yeah, right. Is, this, is the tea, he spilled the tea, but is it true tea? Yeah. Any any thoughts on Laris Strong or or the new Hand of the King? Who uh, I'll just speak for myself first. He's Lord Strong, Lionel Strong. He's now Hand of the King. Seemingly, in a bunch of these earlier episodes, it felt like he was giving wise advice. I agree. But, but now that he's Hand of the King, and and to be honest, when the kind of first things we see him do is he's like, "Hey, Corliss isn't out here to greet us. That's not cool. That is a smart thing for Hand of the King to say." But now that I see his one son is, uh, you know, kind of this, is Laris, who's out there spilling tea. And then his other son, Harwin, is the is the guy, he's like, hey, listen, okay, go out there and break up this fight. You know, uh, should we should we have a couple eyes on new hand of the king, Lionel Strong, and his motivations? Captain? I guess we are, because I agree that before, I thought he gave great advice. Yeah. In general, Otto gave pretty good advice, too, but he screwed yeah. himself by trying to yeah. by getting Allison involved. Mm -hmm. That was his own problem. Listeners, once again, we've talked about the characters. What do you think of these characters? Talk to us on social media at Double PHQ. And yeah, let time. us know if there's another character that uh, right. that you want us to talk about or you want uh, to share your thoughts on. We love it. Now it's All time right, to hear from you in a in a, in, a, in another. Match game. Are you ready? Oh, I love it, Bubba. Let me read this one. Okay. Read it. Rather than a gelding or torture, Allison will sentence Sir Kristen Cole to blank. Gene Rayburn. Charles Nelson Riley. Brett Summers. Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson. Fanny Flag. Oh, my God. And Coolio. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, wait, wait. Oh, my God. I'm blanking. Nipsey Russell. He was good Nipsey on the old match Russell. game. Oh, man. All, All right, right, Bubba. Yeah. Rather than a gelding or torture, Allison will sentence Sir Kristen Cole to... Confession. Because he, he, he'll tell her anything she wants to know. My God. I mean, oh, loose horrible. lips sink ships. And... Uh, Kristen Cole has the loosest lips there are. So for that one, I thought she's going to send it to him to confession because every week he'll tell some more things he really shouldn't tell anybody. All right, Bubba. I'm not playing this game right. I know I'm not because 
I'm never matching with anybody, and I'm not going to match anybody with my Hold answer. On, here. Rather right. than a gelding or torture, Allison's, Allison will send its Kristen Cole to... Carrying her big-ass baby around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kathy, you really got a one-track mind about this... 20 pound baby <laughs> 20 that baby is 60 pounds if it's 60 an ounce pound baby well okay would I you mean, rather she be... had it today it was huge all right well hold on would you rather be gelded tortured or or you don't have to do some deadlifts of the <laughs> princess or prince <laughs> well that's what's happening she's like look i don't have to do any of that but i'm <laughs> my back is sore all right, Bubba, let's see right, if somehow on. I got lucky. Because somebody else appreciated Come or on. mentioned the big ass baby. So all That's right. true. That is true. Now hold on, Catfish. Do you have the right link? Let me make sure you've got the right link. I do. I've got like five answers. One, two, three, four, five answers. Wait, is the show more replies? I think we've got more. Oh, Holy oh. cow. Yeah, well make sure you all right, so you ready? I see six answers. All right. All right, I'll read the first. I'll read it. Rather than gelding or torture, Queen Alicent will sentence Sir Kristen Cole to... Sponging off his grace. <laughs> oh, right, she no. doesn't want to have to sponge Viserys yeah. anymore. Somebody else should do it. Oh, God, that might be the worst. Mm, man, I don't know. I see, Actually, now I see it. There's some worse ones. All right, here we go. Okay. Rather than a right, gelding... Who, who is that from? Who is that from? Oh, oh, sorry, yes. That is from Tory Hunter at Mandatory. All right. Queen Alicent will sentence Kristen Cole to... Stay on his knees and give her some of the same triple C shape treatment he gives to the princess. Oh, my God. Oh, wait, triple C. Hold <laughs> on. Keep it clean. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can I keep oh it clean? Goodness. Let's just say Kristen Cole and then... Uh, and then an, an act of pleasing a woman that starts with his something. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's at Dooley's left leg. <laughs> oh, content. Oh my God. Thank you, Dooley. Oh my God. How can we continue on? Oh my God. All right, here, read another one because I think we might have a match All between right. Rather so than a gelding or torture, Queen Allison will send it Sir Kristen Cole to stay on his knees for her for life. Oh, okay. That's okay, a match okay. with Dooley's left leg. Oh. <laughs> okay, that. Oh, pull it back in. Pull it back together. Oh, okay, my that God. was our good buddy, Matt Murdock at Musical <laughs> Concepts. Okay. You know, dirty minded, but clean worded. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Right, Wait, these are so terrible. All right. Rather than a gelding or torture, Allison will send its Kristen Cole to the double C. The double Z? Yeah, Cinnamon Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nicholas Tiemann at Nichtmon. Oh, my God. You know, I love the Cinnamon Challenge. Okay, all right. Nick. Holy all cow. Right. All right, here we go. Rather than a gelding or torture, Queen Alicent will sentence Sir Kristen Cole to... Be the Queen's Nutcracker. Oh. That's that Nicholas Fortuna. Oh, I did not match any of these. Uh, all right, hold on, there's one more, right? That's okay, all right, let's see. Let's see if I match. Okay. Rather, rather than a gild, oh, wait, yeah. rather than a gilding or torture, Queen Allison will send its Kristen Cole to being a spy on the Queen to be. Now that is actually the most logical answer. I'm gonna, I say that's a win for giving and, me an answer that makes sense. No boo, no sensible answers. <laughs> I want to hear about female satisfaction. Oh. All right. All right, excellent. Flat, likely Seth. Good. Thank you, Likely Seth. I mean, Likely Seth has given us some other funny answers, yeah. so I appreciate Likely Seth giving us what is probably the right answer. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, so terrible and so good. Hey, get yeah. ready, everybody. Oh, man. All rise. Enter the small council debate. First topic is one King Viserys and new hand of the king, Lord Lionel Strong, debated. Is it not better to have lived in peace than to have song sung after you're dead? Catfish, do you want to be a peaceful king but maybe not remembered? Or be a king who wins many wars? Let's hear your argument. Your Honor, yes. there are only two things that we have to live after us. Our children and our names. 
our feats, what we did in life. Okay. And let me tell you something. These children are all horrible, Your Honor. <laughs> and you can't you, you can't rely on nothing from them. So the only thing you can rely on is that your name lives long after you and your deeds are sung and spoken of. Right. If you the only way that you will have deed songs sung about you is if you actually do something. Hmm. If you don't do something and you live in peace, you're what I like to call WK Yana. WK. Yeah, weak king, Your Honor. Oh, uh, that doesn't rhyme, but but that I mean it. All. It's got doubles. Doesn't have doubles, Your Honor. No, it doesn't. You know why? Because it's important. Why? It's just like our last match game answer, Your Honor. It yeah. may not be funny, but it's the truth. Hey, heck yeah, Your Honor. Let me say that Catfish was saying that you don't want to be a weak king, but everybody loves a good song. You know what song that um, Taylor Swift sings that is so great is Take It Off. Or Shake It Off. <laughs> shake It Off. Shake It Off. And you know who never got to hear that song? John Lennon, because he was dead. And so the point is, Your Honor. Yeah, I'd please, like to know what it is, Your Honor. <laughs> give me a minute. I'll come up with something. No, Your Honor, the point is, is that Yes, Your Honor. memory is great. But if you can live peacefully and then just have a couple of terrible kids, that is better than having some yip de doo song. What war has, has King Viserys even had? It, it wasn't really a war. He had a jerk named the Crab Feeder, you know, taking, taking hold of a couple of islands down in the step zones. Your Honor, did he Being even go after this look. man? He didn't, he didn't even look. go after this man. There could have been songs. He did sung. go after him. He did send ships. No, he it could have been. Him. There could have been a song called "You Crack the Crab." <laughs> okay, yes, but that song sounds terrible. <laughs> Unlike "Take It you Off," "Shake It Off," "You Crack the Crab," "You Crack the Crab," "Crab Feeder," everyone needs a. Yes. It's, it's good, Yana. It's good. Well, I can't, can't sing, finish the song. I can't finish the song, Yana, because he never, never cracked the crab. And that is my point, Yana. You see, you agree with me. Final statement, Counselor Bubba. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, who was a better president? President George W. Bush? Because he saved Kuwait? Or <laughs> he did save Kuwait when Iraq invaded it. I'm so they're so happy in Kuwait that we came to their risk. Or is it better to be hmm? somebody like current President Joe Biden, who ended our troops in Afghanistan? So, listeners, who do you think is better? <laughs> George W. George H. W. Bush. Everybody in Kuwait loves him, but you know, hey, think of all the songs of Kuwait. I, I don't think that's true, Yana, and I don't know. Or, any songs. or Biden, who is a better president? <laughs> Listeners, let us know. That'll decide. <laughs> wow, that has gone off the rail. It did. Next case, as a non-book reader, catfish. How long do you expect the king to live after episode five? King Viserys. Well, Jan, I got two answers. One is okay. based on his health and the yeah. time period. My answer is about two minutes. <laughs> and then based on the future previews and stuff that his, his, his royal catfish discussed last week, I expect it to be after a huge time jump so that... <laughs> Uh, so that Viserys and Alicent's child can truly vie against Rhaenyra. Okay. But, Your Honor, this, this yes. is ridiculous, Your Honor. Yes. This is ridiculous. I, he should not have lived three years. He should not have lived in between episode two and three, Your Honor. This is ridiculous. He cannot live any longer. He's falling over. He's bleeding out of his nose. Your Honor, basically, his his back in about... Three weeks, it's going to look like Joffrey's face. <laughs> Just rotted. Now, 
Your Honor, if I could mention to Catfish, Catfish, I don't know if you heard this interview, mm -hmm. but it was recently revealed that apparently what King Viserys has is leprosy. That's what the showrunners have said his disease is. Do you have any idea how long a human can live with leprosy? Well, I think they can live with leprosy for a long time, but I was not aware that some of the uh, side effects of leprosy were bleeding out of your nose and, and passing out. So uh, I assume that uh, that is true if they say so, but oof, I, I again, I'll say I don't, I'm not sure how long people with leprosy lived back in those days. Well, again, this is fantasy, Catfish. There are no <laughs> those days, but sure. Those those days, you're on a, with, with their with their their medical treatments. I mean, sure they have Plan B in T form. That's fancy. Well, all right, um, Your Honor. Since I have read the book and I don't want to go any further, I do want to ask Catfish some other questions that here at the halfway point. Let's predict. And yeah, okay. this first one doesn't have any predicting, but Catfish, mm -hmm. who do you? prefer like who if there was a battle right now between princess rainera and the young you know at this point still an infant prince um aegon which side would you choose who would you support in in a war between those two or in a, a battle between those two well first i'm going to slightly uh refuse to accept the premise of your question only because I think if it came down to it and there was a true battle for things, which is what I expect, that uh, Damon would be part of a uh, three-way battle for the, the throne. Okay, I point. think there would be more than three, but those would be the three heavies. I would still prefer Rhaenyra hmm. simply because we spent time with her and right. she is a kick-ass character. Uh, I would still like to know more about why she really wants it, but uh, she's the one that I that I would pick. Now, does mm -hmm. she have? Would she have most people with her? Absolutely not. She's a female. There's been no right. females up to this point. Uh, I do think that uh, that Aegon uh, would have the best shot at getting allies around him. All right. Uh, because you did bring in Damon as a kind of third wheel to this, which side? And once again, uh, I won't answer. But Catfish, which side do you think House Valerian would side with? Their son just married Rhaenyra, and so all are their ships going to go with their son to Rhaenyra? But we have seen Corlys and Damon fight together. They've been allies. So would Corlys? go with his bro who helped him win the Stepstones, Prince Damon, or would Corliss go with his son and uh, Rhaenyra? Oh, I feel very strongly that he would go with his son and Rhaenyra. Remember, even though he was uh, partnered up with Damon, he was not exactly considered an equal partner. Oh, no. That's a <laughs> he good He was point. chastised for speaking ill about uh, King Viserys. So I think he would go with his family, not only because it's his family, but now this is his, eventually his family's throne. So what, I don't even imagine he would think for a second about going with Damon. Okay, I'm going to throw out one final question. Listeners, mm -hmm. if you have other questions for non-book reader Catfish, send them to us at Double PHQ. We did mention that we now have a new hand of the king. Mm-hmm. Sir Lionel Strong, Lord Lionel Strong, and he's got his two sons that we talked about. Which way do you have any idea they would side? Like, does it even matter? But here he's he is on the small council. He's hand of the king. Which way do you think he would side if in that three-way battle of Damon, Rhaenyra, and the young baby, Aegon? I think he will go with Aegon. It seems clear. If his son is doing it, or even if not, I think that his real power rests with staying with Alicent, mm -hmm. the okay. the king, as long as she, you know, that he can uh, keep Viserys uh, unaware of his machinations to unseat Rhaenyra. I think he's definitely with Aegon. Okay, final. Oh, I said that was the final question, but now you've made me think of one. 
Okay. Anybody you think who would side their forces with Prince Damon? <laughs> Anybody. Oh, wow. That well, what is would a his great... allies be? He, he does have a dragon, but uh, even uh, Masiria doesn't seem to be on his side anymore. Like, who would be his, who would be his supporters? I don't know. He doesn't even seem to have any uh, supporters on Runestone, which now he thinks he's <laughs> he's he's getting hey the deed to. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think he has any allies. Although I'll say this, and this is just came to me out of nowhere because I really think Allison is really going to start playing the game really well now. Okay. I think the next one we're going to have such a jump that it's going to irritate me to no end that. Nothing has boiled over in the intermediary time. Yeah, probably, yeah. But I think as part of playing the game, Allison could use Damon as a chip. Mm, ooh, fascinating. Hey, I think that would be fun. If you have or haven't read the books, tell us what you think of Catfish's thoughts so far. What are your thoughts so far? Once again, try not to give us any spoilers. But this is fun that we're in this scenario where we've got uh, one book reader and one non-book reader and we can kind of wonder where this story is going to go but let me say mm -hmm. as a book reader this show because this is such kind of um the best way to describe it the text in this is kind of so light that they can give motivation for a lot of things that you know they just say yeah and this happened like for example in this episode Freya royce he knew she died from a horse riding accident there's no mention of Damon's involvement at all mm. in the te in the text of the book. So they can give motivation and kind of new twists on the way things went down. So it's very fascinating. Once again, let us know. Catfish, we do have one final question. Judge, do you want to ask it? How would you like to be compared to a greasy goose? Hmm. Yana. Yes. Obviously, it all depends on how you feel about the goose. But let me tell you how I feel about a greasy goose. Okay. First of all, it's delicious, and yeah. since it's greasy, it's obviously fatty, which means mm, it is finger looking good. Haven't you heard of <laughs> K KFG, Yana? KFG? Yeah, Kentucky Fried Goose. Oh, okay. I thought you were going KFGWB. <laughs> Well, in honor of Dooley's last legs, I was going to go with KFC. No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't do it. KF Triple C. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's Yana, get back. Delicious, yes. greasy goose. A goose okay. is a goose is just delicious, Your Honor. All right. Hey, uh, let me jump in, Your Honor. With uh, yeah. We love our listeners, and we're going to get to more of their feedback in a bit, but mm -hmm. our good friend Susan Stacy, who's been a part of Podcast Winterfell and Before the Dragon podcast for so long, who's at Black Eyed Lily on Twitter, she's heard me, and I've always kind of, even when I've loved this show, like in tonight's episode, I always kind of give it praise, but kind of hold something back. And so Susan tweeted me a question uh, the other day. She said, do you think it will improve how interesting you find House of the Dragon, knowing that from this novel, Fire and Blood, the number of important characters will grow quite a bit in the next few episodes. Susan writes, I think my answer is that I continue to both hate and love Prince Damon. Oh, well, Susan, write right. us, let us know how you feel about Princess Damon, Prince Damon after this uh, massacre of his wife, murder of his wife. So love to let that know. Susan, to answer your question, in these last couple of podcasts, I've talked about, boy, you know, the show really just keeps revolving around these five characters. And, five mm -hmm. characters. and so I feel bad that if I, I given the impression that my problem with House of the Dragon, and it's a very minor problem, but one of my minor problems with House of the Dragon is that there are only five characters. That's not the the problem at all. Five characters are plenty. It's that these five don't really ever joke or have fun. And so, you know, that's kind of tough, but even that's not the real issue. The real issue is that of the five, and I said the five were Prince Damon, Princess Rhaenyra, King Viserys, Alison, and Otto Hightower. And I said, of the five, here we've gone through four episodes at the time, and now we've gone through a fifth. And I think the show doesn't always give great insight into these five. In fact, I really mm. feel like before tonight's episode, I kind of only felt like I really knew three of the five well, and that's the three Targaryens. 
And so what do I mean by that? And I was, and I wrote this out. So I wrote that, look at Queen Alison Hightower. Every scene that she had up until last episode, episode four, she's kind of playing a role. She's not being herself. She's not really saying what she thinks. She's playing a role. So when she's with the king, she's had to play a role. Okay, she can't completely freely speak her mind. Before she was queen, she had a role to play with Rhaenyra. And then afterwards, her and Rhaenyra couldn't truly communicate as freely as they did. When she's with her father, you know, she's kind of playing the role of diligent daughter. And so I thought back to the original Game of Thrones, forgive me, but, you know, Arya and Sansa, if, if Ned had said, go visit King Robert in your mother's clothes, if, if Ned had said that to Arya or Sansa, both of them would have told their father, Ned, exactly how they felt, right? Like they would have said, no, I feel this way. Arya's saying, you know, I don't want to be a lady. I want, I want to be a knight or I want to fight with, you know, whatever. Sansa was always saying, I want to marry Prince Joffrey. It's what I've always wanted to do. Like people were always able to say what they thought. That was true of kind of so many characters. In Game of Thrones, Cersei and Jaime would have scenes together. So you would see where they were coming from because mm -hmm. they were talking to people they could be honest with. And King Robert with with uh, with Ned was always. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. Like Eddard was a hand of the king to Robert. But Ed, Eddard, Ned, and Robert, they were bros, so they could always talk and be truthful with each other. Otto, in every scene he's had, almost every scene he's had, he's with the king. And so he is always on. It doesn't, you know, we can get what he wants from the way he talks to the king, but it's never like he's flat out, this is the way I feel. And so there was that scene last week where Otto learns about Rhaenyra in the brothel. And it's a scene of just Otto by himself. And to me, it reads as Otto's thinking, do I tell the king? How do I tell the king? Like all these things we're thinking Otto is, is to me, I'm thinking, oh, Otto is having some, you know, kind of questions about how to do this, if he should do it. But if I'm, I'm having to guess, because there haven't been a lot of scenes of Otto talking to a peer. He has a scene, like he has this really, they're in the small council chamber. Otto's brother is there. And his brother says, get Aegon to be named here. And Otto can't respond. The king's there. Like, literally, it's a one-line seed. And so, you know, it's just tough. I, I think after episode five, you know, it's really in episode four, Allison, you know, started having more one-on-one more -on -one scenes. And if she couldn't be completely honest with her husband, with the king, it was more like, oh, I can tell. She's, you know, she's saying what she wants. She was trying to reach out to Renera, And so I could see that. And so... Now, I think five episodes in, I certainly have a better feel of the five main characters of this show. But really, that's kind of been my big holding back point of of why sometimes even when I love an episode, I've only gone to eight as maybe 10. Any thoughts on what I just said, Catfish? Does it make sense? Hopefully it makes some sense. It does. I think you've expressed some of these things before in little bits. And I, I love that you gave some concrete examples here. And I agree with you for having such few characters that we focus on to know what they're really going for uh, is helpful. Even tonight when we saw Corliss and the queen that, that never was, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they were fully bearing their true feelings to each other. And so that's kind of, it still feels like things are a little hidden from us. And I agree with you that the things were not hidden in Game of Thrones. So I 90% I agree with you. All right. Listeners, who cares what we think? We want to know what you think. What are your favorite characters? Who are your favorite characters? Why do you feel like mm -hmm. you've got a great handle on these five? And now let's add six. Kristen Cole is definitely in the top six now that he's getting pulled in so much, it feels like. Orlis in, in, in Rainey's the queen who never was they're in big let us know at double phq on twitter and instagram facebook.com slash double phq youtube if you've watched this long leave those comments we want to hear from you i really feel like moving forward the your our problems with alicent are going to go away because she too. is going to start with the king losing his power and knowing what she knows i really feel like she's going to take more action rather than kind of being passive and, and acted upon. Heck yeah. 
All right. Hey, let's get to some more feedback. On Twitter, we got great feedback from somebody whose handle is at Girl Nettles, known as The Girl Nettles on Twitter. At Girl Nettles just wrote, I'm just glad the Joffrey of Podcast is back. Well, oh, thank you. Oh, heck yeah. And Joffrey was back for one heck night yeah. one night only. <laughs> All right. And our good buddy, David Gobert, says, Oh, yes. Why wasn't Kristen Cole booted out of the Kingsguard? Princess R even admitted to sneaking out on his watch. Yep. And speaking of Princess R, shouldn't she be canceled for workplace sexual harassment? <laughs> if Cole turned her down, he'd have earned her ire. And now that he took her virginity, he faces death if found out. Right. Or, or, or even worse, gelding. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. He, yes. He asked for death as a more pleasant alternative. <laughs> <laughs> that well, is uh, about him being booted out. That is, that's a tough question because he's not a nanny. He's supposed to be her protector, right? He's right, stopping right. people from coming in, theoretically, not her from going out. You stay here and make sure he doesn't leave the roof. <laughs> yes, I'm Monty Python. Shout out there. Yeah, I Catfish, you said it perfectly. I do think, though, that if you're Kristen Cole, you've now told the queen mm -hmm. so two people know about you breaking your oath mm. Rhaenyra and Allison mm -hmm. and I have to assume Joffrey Longmouth if you had a last name you know like people uh, in, in the original show if you were like Gendry and you didn't have a last name it was a sign you were given you know like Rivers or you were given Jon Snow you didn't really have a last name if this guy was Joffrey Longmouth and he had a last name and you just killed him as a king's guard you are, you, yeah, you are in big trouble. You are going to lose your job. Mm -hmm. And let me well, tell you this. Yeah, yeah. Are you really still going to be Rhaenyra's member of the King's Guard to protect her? I mean, there's no way her new husband's going to want you around. Oh, no. I mean, awkward. He, he's, he is definitely not down with that. Now, he feels like Chris and Cole is going to be a creature of Allison. So we'll yeah. see, we will see how that works out. Maybe she gets him assigned to... Well, is there all one? I'm really showing my ignorance here. Is there all one Kingsguard and they just get assigned to different people like yeah. the Secret Service? Okay, so maybe he's going to get that baby. <laughs> he's going to get your. He's going to carry the baby yeah. around. So Allison's going to have to, if she wants him to stick around, she is going to have to stand up to Ray Nera. That's going to be yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and as far as her workplace sexual harassment, it is true there is a, a difference in power there, although I felt that they both had the same feelings for it. And also, yeah, I, I find his. Hmm, I can't think of the exact right word, but his sense of uh, shame and confession to <laughs> the queen to be a little. Righteous, too righteous for my uh, desires. You just want him once again. If you did A and it could get you gilded, you said you're going to give us every other letter. Of I'm going to give you B through Z. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then and then if I have to start over, B B, B C C, B C B D. I'm going to go through. There will be no A's. All right. So <laughs> Bubba. Yeah. As you said, we got the match game, but we do it right afterwards. We do the podcast right we after did. to get it into your hot little hands. So we've got some match game feedback. From last week questions no, thank God. from listeners who deserve to have their answers shared on the show. All right, you ready? Yes. One of the questions from last week was Rhaenyra and Damon are niece and uncle. And in the pleasure den, they had a tonsil hockey session. <laughs> that's what you say when you're a teenager. Heck yeah. That's from uh, our good friend, the girl Nettles. Wonderful. At girl Nettles on Twitter. Heck yeah. Right, Rhaenyra and Damon are niece and uncle, and in the pleasure den they had a triple P, triple P, yeah, pervy passion play. Well, they sure ah, did. that's good because there was a little, a little theater in that episode yeah. as well. So that was a nice bringing in all sides. All right, Rhaenyra and Damon are niece and uncle, and in the pleasure den they had a they had a dong of vice and liar. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, the pervy passion play is from our good buddy at Revere Terry on Twitter. And this last one, just terrible. 
and wonderful a so dog good. of vice and liar is from at Clausen's. I hope I Clausen's the way it you looks think like you would spell Clausen's. Klaus Sons because oh, Klaus, he's Klaus Sons, Satan yeah. Klaus. Yeah, Klaus okay, Sons. So Klaus Sons. Okay, so good. That's pretty good. Oh my God. Now, speaking All right. of that passion play, the name of the play yeah. that Damon Rhaenyra watch is called The Throne Blank. With the boning. That's the so throne, close to what I said boning. last week. That's I love good. it. All right. So that's at Revere Terry, our good friend Terrence Revere. All right. Here we go. Come on, read this. I got to read oh, this no, one. Here we go. The name of the play that Damon and Rhaenyra watch is called The Throne of the Half Grown Hambone. <laughs> that not, not. is from Klaus Sons again. That's, that's I feel like there's a lot that that well, you, as long as you put bone in there, that's a match. <laughs> and our final thing from last week: after Damon and Renera's first trip to the brothel, their next family outing will be to the nearest baby dragons are us. Oh man, now that is so good. At that likely, likely Seth. Seth. Yes. All right. And after Damon and Renera's first trip to the brothel, their next family outing will be to the. Sir Jerry Springer show. That is a match. Yes. Somebody said yes. Jerry Somebody Springer. Said Jerry last Springer. Week. So good. That's so at, good. At Revere Terry on Twitter. The the fact that we have matches are incredible. They this is incredible, Catfish. It's so good. Well, it just goes to show you that our loyal listeners are both very, very good looking, very intelligent. And yep. because I said both, obviously I'm going to say a third thing. Okay. And that is very funny. Heck to the year. All right. Hey, for everybody here at the Job for Your Podcast, my name is Bubba. You can find me on Twitter at Fit and Trim. That's F I T T E N T R I M at Fit and Trim on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm Catfish. You can hit me up at CJG Man 67 on Twitter. You're 67th CJG Man. And on Instagram, I'm at G to the Man, G E E T O T H E M A N. And this week, don't forget, before our next podcast, listen for our and or podcasts on the Parsec Passion Podcast. But but we will talk to you next week on the, the Joffrey, Joffrey of podcast. podcast. A podcast about Joffrey the Podcasts. Hell to the year. I'm telling mother. Oh.